destination, Newry, broadcasting live to the world. Uh, and uh, we're lots of guests coming to see us and to be with us this morning. And people are coming and going at their ease and taking life as best they can. So uh, we have lots of good people mingling with us, including <laughs> Don here, Don Patterson, the golfer. And I, the golfer, Warren Point Golf Club. I hadn't realized that Warren Point Golf Club started its life in Bally Edmund. Oh, yeah, not only Bally Edmund. It started, first of all, in the Camlo Road in what was the drill fields. The Camlo Road? Yeah, that was the Newry Golf Club. Yeah. In 1891. And then Bally Edmund came along about 1892. And it was reckoned, the press at the time said, was the ideal location for a golf course because you had the loch, yeah. you had the forests, yeah. and you had everything. The scenery was just yeah. magnificent. But are you, are you an aristocrat? And is that why you were allowed to play golf? Because when you were starting golf, the golf in those days would have been uh, uh, really not for the common man. Well, I like the way you say that because I don't think it was around in 1893. <laughs> oh, not that far back. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, the uh, situation arose that uh, I came into golf because I was good at other sports. And the was, other sports were? Well, I played a lot of hockey. I played hockey at top level. I played soccer for Derry City. Did you? And I played a lot of games. Yep. And so therefore, I looked at it all and logically it, se it seemed that golf might be a game that I could spend more time, I would have more years at More years at it, yeah. I've been a golf pro now for uh, over 65 years. My goodness. You know, so you wonder why I, I, I wouldn't have lasted that length in a football pitch. No. But the great prize that you got from golf wasn't silverware. You got the love of your life from golf. Absolutely. She was the person who kept me restrained all the time and said you don't move this way or that way so she was the one that really kept me under control. How did you meet? How did the love affair happen? Again funny enough by she playing was Mary golf. Street she girl. was Mary Street girl. As, yeah. I was a Mary Street young yep. man. I was yeah born that's there. right you were in the same parish. The same parish <laughs> yes. Yeah she she played a bit of golf and I gave her lessons and uh, that was how it all developed. You cute old thing. Oh I absolutely. <laughs> I, I had to other business as well. Ah yes yes indeed. So, golf, uh, at what stage did you come to golf? I came to golf when, uh, it's strange as it may seem, that looks, looking back on it, I would have taken to golf reasonably seriously when I was at school. Yeah. And then when I was about 20 years of age, I decided that some, they wanted me to play soccer at a good level. You know, there have been mm. a few clubs were after me to go, but I thought, right, golf's the game for me. So I came into golf as a professional, an assistant professional at Knock, in about 19, when I was about 19, 20 years of age. Yes, yes. yes. And from then on, it just was quite an interesting lifestyle. Is, I'm trying to figure golf out, and I tried to play it and wasn't awfully good at it. Maybe I didn't persevere. Maybe I couldn't keep my head down long enough. Maybe I couldn't keep my eye on the ball. But I mean, the notion of hitting a ball towards a hole that you cannot see, uh, that's a bit difficult. It, it, it's a field game, you see. I think that's what's really wrong. Uh, nowadays, there's so much technicalities about the game. There's so many books written about it. There's so much television coverage of the technical aspects of playing the game. And you find quite often that if you just got up, let your own natural ability take over and you hit the ball. I mean, that was where the hockey was a very big help to me. Yeah. And funny, Eye hand coordination absolutely. was there. Yeah. yeah, and so therefore it makes it an awful lot easier if you've not got many things swilling around in your brain. Yeah. But it's the swilling around in the brain that causes the problem for bad, uh, bad golf. Because unless you're focused when you're there on what you're doing, the game in hand, when you put the problems of today or yesterday to the one side and relax into the game, I sense it begins to come good. Yeah, you, you, get, you get players over the years that were so good, the like of Lee Trevino, who was, who was yeah. just a character. Mm. Uh, when you get on the golf course, all he did was enjoy it. Mm. I mean, he said, there's the ball, there's the target, let's hit it to let's it. Let's go, let's do it. Let's yeah. hit it to it. Yeah. Were you that kind of natural golfer in your head? I wouldn't think there's any such thing as a natural golfer. You've got a natural eyeball coordination, mm. but you've got to really work at perfecting it. Yeah, but sometimes... Uh, but practice makes problems as well as making perfect. No doubt about that. If you're doing that. it the wrong way. But I think this is the thing that uh, 
is very, very important. If You have to hold the golf club in a certain way, which is slightly difficult. Mm. So when you take the game up, and I, I feel a lot of people that aren't taking the game up, don't spend enough time learning it from someone yeah. who is an experienced teacher, Absolutely. you know, who will make him, them understand the intricacies Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. One of the best, funny what you say, one of the best drives ever I did in golf, and this is an interesting little story, I went to make a television program about the, uh, the European Blind Golfers Championship. And these are people who couldn't see, but yet they played golf and they played it very well. And I elected to have a blindfold put on myself. And I just applied what I'd been told, the way to do it, blah, 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 blah. And it was the most beautiful drive that I've ever... And I couldn't see what I was doing. But, but it, that, that follows because obviously you were set in a position when you get someone who's failing sight or poor eyesight and you set them in position and they make a swing in the way the ball goes. They're not thinking of, do I keep my head down, as you referred uh -huh, to earlier, uh -huh. or do I keep my left mm. arm straight or do I follow through mm. or do that. The ball's there. If you ground the club behind it, make a swing and hit it through the spot where the ball lies, then you're on your way. You're on your way. And that was why you found it easier, because you weren't cluttered up with thoughts as to how I do it. What about Rory McIlroy? What makes him the magnificent golfer he is? Well, you see, I, th I think that you've got to take a lot of these things uh, as they occur. I mean, if you take the predecessor in the country that we had, who would have been Rafferty, Ronan? Yeah. No, I mean, Isn't he, it interesting? The, the gap between Ronan finishing and McElroy starting was quite a gap. Quite a gap. But in between, there were quite a number of players that came through that just didn't make it to the highest, uh -huh. the highest echelons of it. But, but, you know, when I was the Ulster and Irish boys coach, I would have had guys like McDole. Really? And, and Michael Hoey. And all these guys were all in my squads. And these guys really, without quite attaining the heights that McElroy did or Rafferty pre mm. previously, then the, it was just a question of yeah. getting the breaks and not maybe having the same financial backing uh -huh. and getting everything right. Uh, you see, I, I, this is a guess, that golf in uh, Rafferty's day, very different game. There's an absence of the same funding, all of that. And maybe that's a co the consequence of that is that Michael Roy is in a class of his own that Rafferty could never have been in. Or is that wrong? No, it's not wrong. I think the big thing, I mean, having been a coach on the inside and working with the, the international boys mm. teams and things mm. like that, uh, they, didn't want, they, di they didn't want for anything. You know, mm. th these guys had everything lifted and made. It's a bit like the soccer players. There's so much financial backing into players nowadays that yeah. it makes it a heck of a lot easier. Because remember that they're having to fly halfway around the world to play tournaments. That's right. And you can't That's afford right. that. If you go back to when I would started off at the game, it was difficult to get yourself from here to England. Mm, <laughs> you of know, course, never of mind course. get yourself from here to Hong Kong. Of course, Kong. of course. Did you, uh, was it a conscious decision that you took in your own time and in your own way to... Uh, to go into coaching and to leave the, the circuit behind you. Well, the funny thing again about that was, I, I mean, I had reasonable successes locally playing in tournaments and stuff like that. But the one thing that made me think when I was in a job like when I came to Warren Point, you had to, you had to make a living. That was the, that was the number mm -hmm. one priority. Mm -hmm. So therefore, where were you going to make a living? Were you going to make a living playing tournaments spasmodically? Mm. Or were you going to make a living by doing the thing that you had a talent to do, which was coach the game? Coach the game. So that was where I developed, when it came to Warren Point, what would have been a school of young players who all went on to great heights. I mean, you consider in Warren Point, the number of players that came out of it that had won high honours at the game. Mm. It's about the only club in the country that would have had three Curtis, three, uh, one Curtis Cup player and Alison Coffey uh -huh. and three uh, other Eisenhower Trophy players like Jim Carville, yes. Paddy Gribben. Yes. They all won European Iconic championships names. as well. Yeah, yeah very And much so. uh, before that you had the like of Rory McCormick and all yeah. these boys who were winning boys championships everywhere. Yeah. 
So the success story at Warren Point was phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, Warren Point was a club that was really looked up to all yeah. the time. You're speaking of Warren Point in a way that, uh, that, that hardly makes you a blow-in. Well, a blow-in of about 60 years is yes, probably... Yes, you know, probably in another 60, you'd that. still be a blow-in. Well, that, really yeah, that's the way but you it's love gone. Warren Point. You have a great pride in that oh, club. Oh, absolutely, because it's first class. The club has been great. You see, the interesting thing again about it, when you go back and look at the history of the club, if you look at when the club started, the, the first thing that happened was that the Great Northern Railway and the Irish Hotels Federation and all got together mm. to buy what was the Beach Hotel, which then became the Great Northern, wow. and it's now the St. Joseph's Care Home. Yes. So yes. these guys were yeah. onto, onto that as a great medium yeah. in golf yeah. in the early 1890s. Mm. You know, so it's so, all it's good sense. So they were, they were all wanting to be part of the action there. Yeah, provenance is there. Yeah, that, that's it. It takes us right back. Uh, the thing I can never understand is why in, you become the greatest golfer in the world and they give you a, a bit of a trophy that in, at, at a certain level, sort of a bit of, a bit of glass that gathers dust in the house. Or, but they're not be far better off giving you a decent few pounds on top of it. Oh, well, they give you they that, that as well. They give you right? that as well. They I do. mean, the checks that you get now are quite phenomenal. Wow, goodness I mean, gracious. Does that make you jealous? Not angry. at all. No, not at all. Good luck to them. Money doesn't make you Indeed any happier, does it? Doesn't. It's not the most wonderful thing I've heard said in a long time. You're absolutely no, right no, there. No, no. I mean, you, yeah. you get job satisfaction and... You can pay the rent. And <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the important thing. That's called thing. survival, that's, baby. That's, that's it. it. That's it. So listen, has the the Warren Point Golf Club that you and I alluded earlier to the fact that it was a, a game of aristocrats and snobs. Once upon a time, it might have been that, and uh, the ordinary working fellow wouldn't have been invited in. But now it's a place of ordinary enough folk. Well, I think the transformation through golf was that it became a game for everyone. Yes. You didn't. You didn't have to be of a certain social status yeah. to get into a golf club yeah. you could become a golf and most of the golfers would have all been ordinary working lads you know yeah. they came in and of course watching the the increase in televisual coverage of golf uh, in, in enhanced the appetite absolutely it it's got so much exposure all mm. through the world now yeah i played i played golf with rory McElroy once for a documentary i was doing with him Rory was the, the, is the patron of a children's charity in Belfast, and we were doing the, the thing. And I, it was mine, easy enough stuff. We were just driving off and doing a few puts. But I saw that man drive a ball, and I never saw anything like it. It was the nearest thing I saw to a, a cobra standing on two legs and turning. Absolutely. The man didn't have a spine, it seemed to me. Not at all. He's so, so athletic, so, yeah. so flexible. Huge. Hugely so. I think, you know, this is the one thing that I think the average golfer fails in not doing a bit of physical exercise, you know, to get uh -huh. the rotations of your body right to let yeah. you hit the ball that much better. Yeah. And if you, if you do that, you're always going to find that it can work out. I mean, when I was at Warren Point, a lot of these guys, we used to have fitness sessions for them as yeah. well, you know, so yeah. they all worked. Uh, very hard at their fitness, yeah. and when you take someone like Jim Carvel, I mean, he won he won the world record for the fastest round of golf played. My goodness, you know, and things like that. So, all these guys really uh, were had special talents. Yeah, yeah, huge people and hugely dedicated to the whole business of improving their skill in, in this very, very difficult amphitheatre that is the golf course. Oh, yeah. Because it's, it's, it's if you're distracted at all, you've lost it. The genius on Monday is the, is, is, is the dolt on the Friday, you know? That's right. It's, it's really such a game, and, and you can see all the time the number of new players who come into the winner's enclosure, yeah. that it's not going to be the same guys that will win. Yes. When you look at Tiger this weekend, yeah. missing out the cup after 54 holes, wow. you know, scoring nine over par in the third round. Nine wow. over par? Yeah, nine over par. My goodness. You never thought you would see that. No. Maybe he had another woman on the well, go. Maybe, <laughs> that could have been That very well you know, could be the thing. That's what got him into trouble before. Oh, Goodness yeah. gracious. Well, that is the root anything. of all evil, anyway. Ah, I don't know. If you're lucky, they're not. It's only if you get greedy. As he did. Yeah. Yes, look, but isn't it funny about golf? It's the only, you know, if you're under par in golf, you're doing well. Oh, yeah. If you're under par in, in life, life, you're doing no good. You're really struggling. You're struggling, you? whatever yeah, the sure sense are. of that is. 
So you're, the big thing, I've seen you involved with Fergal in the, in the, the, the schoolboys uh, tournament each year. Oh, well, that's a great tournament, you know, and that has been a great thing for the local area here mm. because we've got kids from everywhere in the country. I mean, all, and we've even had them from England and the States come to play in that tournament. And the, the thing that's good about it is it's like an intro to golf because you've got the kids of under nine, yes. under, yeah. under 13 yeah. is, the, yeah. is the max. And they play, yeah. maybe some of them only play six holes and some of them play nine uh -huh. holes and some of them play 18. So these kids all come together for a day yeah. out. Yeah. They're wined and dined and fed up, That's you know. Wonderful. So it's a good, it's a good event. So you're, if you hadn't been a golf uh, person, what might you have been in life? Up to this point, probably a layabout <laughs> <laughs> or something, or something like that. You would have been, a, you would have been across the water in soccer. I would have been, I think, yeah, yeah. you know. But that's history. You don't dwell in that. No, you, you don't. don't. But you grow from it. You do. You get. Yeah. A, you get. The thing that's very good about. I would advise any youngsters coming into golf to play other games yes. as well, yeah. because if you've got the team situation you've got to learn from it because yes. you've got to rely on other people around you, whereas golf tells to be sometimes too selfish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because selfish in all kinds of ways, because when you, when you go out in a golf course, that's a day gone. That's Can right. be, because oh, yeah. you're going out, you're having a few chitley chatleys at the bar, first of all, then you're having your game of golf, then you're showering and getting bed dressed again, then you're going for your meal after that. That's a whole day out of your life and out of your partner's life, if you have a partner. Well, you see, this is the other thing that sort of slays me a little bit to the length of time it takes to play golf. Mm. I could give you a great example of when Rafferty was at his best. We, I remember he and Brian O'Callaghan, who was an assistant of mine at Warren Point, we played 18 holes of golf at Baltre, which is a big golf course. Yeah. And we teed it off at 10 o'clock, and we were sitting at our lunch at 12. Wow. You know, and it was just hit the ball and yeah, go. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's yeah. go. Baltre is beautiful. I, oh. I, I, I did it. There was a thing within the last five years there. One, a woman, or was it a man, who maybe it's a woman, she played every golf course in Northern Ireland, or a selection of, a big selection of them anyway. And we went by helicopter between oh. each, between each, between each, and it was done for charity. That would have been nice. That was Baltre is outside Drogheda. Yeah, just outside lovely, Drogheda. Oh, lovely absolutely place. magnificent. Yeah, lovely, One of the treasures. Oh, the people don't so. realise. You know, undoubtedly it's, so. It's a great, great yeah. golf course. One point is doing well now. It's, it's huge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, but the, again, I think Warren Point Golf Club is unique and it's the one course and the one club that you get a great welcome in. You do, of course. All the time, yeah. you know, yeah. and uh, they're looked after very well. Yeah. And, they, and now you reach out to the community because there's all kinds of Italian music and dining. Last night you, 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 you had the... The business of history of 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 Newry and uh, historical societies. People come. They maybe not don't play golf, but they come. They'll have a meal with you and they'll be entertained. And then they go away with an enhanced feeling about Warren Point Golf. Well, I think you know you take all the activities that are there. You've got the bridge. You've got the probus meets there, and I think you're coming to. Did you say? There. Did you say the bridge? Yes. The Dare bridge. we talk <laughs> about the bridge? Oh yeah, we don't can. mention <laughs> the war. If we're going to say Jim Boyle is not here yet, I tell you. When am I doing probus? Well, the, I see you're listed to do a talk. In the what time is it? Is that in the morning time? Oh, right, it's always at ten o'clock in the morning or ten uh, thirty. Uh, oh, no, I'm on air until half ten. Oh, well, it'll be about half ten. Yeah, I mean, if I were there at half ten, I'm sure they'll put the, they'll put yeah. it back for a yeah. little while. Oh, sure, we'll so have a ball. I talked to Probus there before. You did. You uh, did a great talk time one ago. time. Bang. But you will do the same again. Sure thing. It's all good. But the, you've got all those things that are occurring there, uh -huh. you know, and uh -huh. it's a, it, that's the good thing about it. It's not a select club. Yes. It's not. It's and that's why I think more. I think they're selecting the people they have. They're lovely people. Oh yeah. You know, you don't get any better select than that. Not at all. Just niceness in people. Yep. Yeah, and that's that's the way it shakes down. I wish you well. We're going to. Do you know what we're going to talk to? I think we might be talking to somebody about pantomime. I think we're certainly talking to somebody about climbing hills and abseiling and oh, well, you got taking off got and windsurfing. It's the place is coming apart. Uh, the lady was talking pantomime. I think there she is. There. Uh, is that a, yes, lovely lady. That's your Hello pantomime there. lady How there. are you? The pantomime she's game. Better looking than the mount <laughs> she's better looking than the mountain climber, I tell you. <laughs> oh, Ian, I didn't say that thing. <laughs> Don, God bless you. Thank we'll you very much. We'll play you some music. When do we do Probus with you? 
soon. That's, it's not very far away. Yeah, we'll it must be that. within the next month or so. Ah, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. All Music right. maestro, please. Por favore. <laughs> Hey. 